Today we are talking about Ape Man. Ape Man is a tool that we use when a question asks you for the number of protons, neutrons, or electrons in an element. So if a question says, how many subatomic particles does carbon have? You use the tool Ape Man. That's going to help you find out, okay, carbon has this many protons, this many electrons, this many neutrons. Then you can add them up together, and that would be your total subatomic particles. So, let's see if I can make this a little clearer. It's a little, better, a little better. First, um, let's title our notes. If you are able to print this page out, print it out. If you are not, then that's okay. You can just draw this in your notebook. It's not a problem. So, we're going to title these eight man notes and write it the same way that I write it eight man notes so to start we need to fill in <clears throat> our um, element tile you get all of this from the periodic table that I linked on this assignment it looks like this except for it's not yellow you will get this periodic table when you take the star test. So notice this tile has these answers. It has these things labeled. So if you opened up what I linked and printed it out, you have the answers right there. So <clears throat> carbon is the element name. Six is the atomic number. And if you stop and you look at your periodic table, what do you notice about the atomic number for each element? It's different. The atomic number for every element is different. No two elements have the same atomic number, so that's unique. It identifies the element. The C is the symbol. When you look at your periodic table, what do you notice about the symbols for every element? So you might notice some of them have one letter, some of them have two letters, but look at that first letter. It's always capitalized. The first letter is always capitalized. The second letter is always lowercase. And it's really important that you write it that way. This is our atomic mass, 12.011. Okay, so the atomic number is on top, and it's like your ID, like the school ID that you had to wear to school. It's like you're holding your ID on your head or you're wearing it on your neck. It says who you are. We know you who you are by that ID number. You are the only person in the school with that ID number. Carbon is the only element with an atomic number of six. So it's like an ID, it's always on top. The atomic mass is like when you stand on a scale and you look down at your mass. So I'm going to put like a scale. Stand on the scale, you look down, you see your mass. So mass number is on bottom like a scale, atomic number is on top like your ID. Technically, you don't have to memorize that because it's on the formula chart. It tells you right here, atomic number, mass number. So that's not something we're ever going to mix up. That's not a careless mistake you're ever going to make because it's right there. All right, so now let's find out what eight man stands for. The A, well, first let me tell you that we split ape man into two different things. We have ape, we have man. Think of them like two formulas. You were asked to find protons, neutrons, or electrons in an element. So you have two different formulas. Ape is to find protons and electrons. Man is to find neutrons. These are the easiest formulas in the whole world. Look at ape. It has an equal sign, an equal sign, an equal sign. So A stands for 
atomic number. Whatever your atomic number is, is equal to the number of protons. So let's pause. What is carbon's atomic number? It's six. So how many protons does carbon have? Six, they're equal. This is also equal to the number of electrons. So how many electrons does carbon have? Six, all three of those are equal. Atomic number is equal to protons and electrons. I told you this was easy. Okay, the M stands for mass number or atomic mass. The A stands for the same thing again, atomic number. And N Okay, y'all, I don't know how that looked to y'all, but my computer just died. So I was saying the A stands for the atomic number. Okay, sorry if that looked weird, y'all. Technical difficulties. Okay, A stands for the atomic number. N stands for neutrons. So we use man to find neutrons. We would have to do the mass number, the atomic mass, minus the atomic number equals neutrons. So this one's a little bit harder because you have to subtract, but it's still easy peasy. So mass minus atomic number. Now there's something really important. Y'all are gonna love this. Nobody wants to mess with a decimal. So when we're doing the mass, we always round to a whole number. So if it is 0.5 or up, 0.5 or up, we round up. So if it is 12.5678, we round up. If it's 0.4 or down, we stay the same. So 12.0 is 0.4 or down, it's 0, 0.0. So we stay at 12. It's 12, that's rounding. So you don't have to mess with decimals at all. Told you this was easy. Okay, so let's just make sure that we totally understand that we use ape man not to find atomic number. We already have that. It's on the periodic table. We're not using it to find that. We use it to find protons, electrons, and neutrons. You're using it to find these subatomic particles. Let's practice. We have three examples. First thing I'm going to do each time is I'm going to set my problem up. I'm going to write ape and man. So the atomic number of boron is good. It's five. It's the number on top. So that means we have five protons and five electrons. Nice and easy. The mass number of boron is 10.8. Since that is 0.8, that's 0.5 or up, so we round up. So we change that to 11 minus, atomic number is 5, equals 6 neutrons. And then I want you to circle what you got. You got 5 protons, 5 electrons, and 6 neutrons. The other numbers are from the periodic table. You didn't get those. You got protons, electrons, and neutrons. 
Let's do another one. Set up your eight man. So if you weren't able, oops, put my minus sign in the wrong place. If you weren't able to print this out and you're writing it in your notebook, make sure you draw the element tile so that you know what you're talking about when you look back at it. Okay, the atomic number of, I don't know how to say this, I'm gonna guess is xenon is 54. So there's 54 protons and 54 electrons. Easy peasy. Mass is 131.2. That's 0 0.4 down, so we stay. 131 minus atomic number is 54. Gives us, you can use a calculator, y'all. I'm going to do my mental math real quick. 77. So what if the problem said, how many subatomic particles, subatomic particles in the nucleus? Okay, so we found three different subatomic particles. We found protons, electrons, neutrons. How many of those are in the nucleus? Well, what's in the nucleus? From your story, it's the two big girls. Perky Patty Proton, Nerdy Nelda Neutron. So you would add protons plus neutrons. So 54 protons plus 77 neutrons. That's how you would find the total subatomic particles in the nucleus only. What if it said outside of the nucleus? That would just be electrons. Electrons are the only one outside. Okay, last one. Okay, our atomic number number on top, 14, so there's 14 protons, so there's 14 electrons. Our mass is 28, atomic number is 14, so there's also 14 neutrons. So you found protons, electrons, and neutrons. What if you have a question that says, what is the total number of subatomic particles. Well, then we would have to add all the parts of an atom, which are protons, neutrons, electrons. So we would have to do fourteen plus fourteen plus fourteen. That would give us the total. So eight man is to find protons, neutrons, electrons, the parts of an atom. You use it whenever you're asked for the number of protons, neutrons, electrons. Good job.